and welcome back everyone. Ellington here and we are back on Total War Rome 2. Did you see that unit die right there? Or at least part of the unit died right there. We are back on the settlement of Alexandria and we have got ourselves a two versus two. Look at that, a big chunk of the enemy killed. I guess the enemy, depending on which side we're looking from, Look at that, 120 man Hillman unit, 29 men left. Just uh, don't don't sit on the wall when it's being attacked, I'm just saying. Now this replay was sent in by Seleucid here. Now Seleucid being commanded by Doozy Bros with his ally here, we've got Epirus being commanded by Shockwave. Now for the defense, we have got Macedon being commanded by Zelena? It's D Z E L E N A. Zelena? And then his ally, or their ally, being commanded, uh, who is commanding Pontus here, we've got Kenny. Now, this is interesting. So, first of all, we, if you didn't notice, we are on large uh, unit sizes, not ultra. Usually for ultra unit sizes, you're on one 60 man count, not on a 120 man count for your infantry. Um, the other thing that is interestingly noticeable here. So first of all, I noticed uh, Seleucid going with the medium siege towers instead of the heavy siege towers. You know, um, we have a lot of tortoises, obviously. One, two, three, four, five, six of them, I believe. Um, but what I found really interesting, no artillery at all on the battlefield. I don't know if... I, I, I would be very surprised if that was an agreed upon rule, given that there's no chat to communicate that, unless all of these guys were, like, in a Discord together... In a Discord together, maybe. Maybe they agreed on a no artillery at all rule. But we have no defensive artillery. There's nothing on the walls. We can't see any scorpions. Um, I guess they might have a scorpion hidden back there, but also no ballistas for the attackers. That's the thing that I find very interesting because I don't think it's a very good idea to not bring artillery as an attacker. And here's the reason why. Where's all of the defending troops? So yeah, you've got troops up here, right? There's stuff here, but where's the rest of them? They're all back here, okay? And... If they, if you had the threat of an artillery, right, sitting back here, being able to go, boo, 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 right, they can't just, they, they got to be careful about where they put their units and they got to, you know, hold stuff further back because they can't stack everything here, right? But without that ability to reach out and touch them, they can do whatever they want. They can set all their units right here and there's not a damn thing you can do about it, right? So... That's why I personally don't think it's the greatest idea. Um, if I'm the defenders at this point, I have all of my units ready to go right here. Because you can't, the attackers can't punish them for it. So why not? You can see they actually have already, they basically just gave up this whole gate area. They're kind of defending the courtyard a little bit. You can see we got Pontic Sword, Pontic Sword, Pontic Sword. But taking them on, we've got a Thorax, a Mercenary Italian, another Mercenary Italian, and then we have a Thorough Spear in support. So you can see Epirus kind of more focusing this general area, while Seleucid coming in on the right-hand side of the attacking force. So on the right-hand side, we've got some Hillman switching out for a Thorax Sword against some Militia Hoplites. Not a very good unit, just gonna be honest with you about that. Another militia hoplite, another militia hoplite, thorough spear. We have a lot of militia hoplites. Another militia hoplite. Mastodon, <clears throat> to be realistic here, Mastodon is a really. <clears throat> I'm trying to think how to say this. It's a. It's honestly kind of a tough faction to play, right? They're very expensive. They really don't have a very good option at a low tier unit. You know, the lowest, the cheapest uh, sword unit they have is a mercenary Thracian warrior. They can only bring three of them or four of them. I think it's three. And even those are like 
five something, I think, if I remember right. And so you basically have from like 500 to the 710 Thorax Sword straight to the uh, 1280 Royal Peltist, right? In their spear units, first of all, nobody really cares because spear units are really not that great in this game. Um, obviously, you have Thorough Spears, which are a great support unit, but they are not mainliners, right? Militia Hoplites are trash. They are not a very good unit. They've got um, Shield Bears, which are pretty average, to be honest with you, especially once again, since Spear units are very underpowered in, in Rome 2. Sword units are have far higher punch than Spear units do which is not very historically accurate, but people tend to prefer swords over spears when it comes to like the romanticization, romanticization of war, quote unquote. Um, so Macedon, it's just a tough faction because you end up with either really small armies or big armies that kind of suck, you know what I mean? Where you have these, you know, armies that are packed in with the really bad units like Militia Hoplites just to kind of fill in the roster and it's kind of that give and take of, a, of, of numbers over quality, quantity over quantity, right? Quantity over quality, excuse me. And it's just, it's a tough faction. You know, if you look at it compared to like Seleucid, right? Seleucid is a far better fleshed out faction. Seleucid has a low tier and a hillman. They've got Thorax swords. They've got uh, Silver Shield Swordsman, Royal Peltist, they have all sorts of stuff across the board that Macedon unfortunately just doesn't have. You know, other than that, they're actually pretty similar factions. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. But yeah, so that's kind of the tough part about about Mas or, but yeah, Macedon. Pontus is another kind of tough one just because their units are unfortunately pretty underpowered. Pontus, Pontic swords are not nearly as good as their counterparts in like Thorax swords and, you know, uh, Parthian swords even. But here we've got the Militia Hop, or yeah, Militia Hoplites and some Thorough Spears taking on some Pontic swords. But kind of an awkward angle, look at this. You got Pontic Sword, but you got another Pontic Sword there. So you have this awkward, like, triangle here while, you know, more stuff is pushing this way. I'm not sure, you know, if they probably should have just pulled this back. So Pont or Mastodon going with three or two archers, at least we could see, just like regular standard crappy archers. Um, hopefully they at least brought two of their Cretans, but I don't, we don't know yet. Citizen Cav, look at that. Because of that weird angle, they've got a gap. They get in the back, they've got it in some in some of those archers, but you've got the Thorax Swords coming in from either side to kind of pinch them off. So hopefully these guys can just walk away. It looks like they are going to. A lot of breaking happening in all those cheaper units. Citizen Cab, it did end up taking some casualties there. If I was a Citizen Cab, I think I would bring them over here and I'd peek, see what's going on around these corners. You know what I mean? Just take a look, see what's going on. Mercenary Italian Swordsman taking on some, We got. looks like we got a mixture of Thorough Spear, or... No, it's a Thorough Spear. No, yeah. I am losing my mind. It's a mercenary Italian sword versus, it's weird because their banner is over here, versus a Pontic Thorough Spear and then another Pontic Thorough Spear. 24 kills and nine kills. Italian Spears with 61. We have a Thorough Spear backing them up. Over here we got, okay, it looks like we have Samnite Warriors in right off the bat. They're pretty beat up with only 19 kills. What happened to them? That's, that's not what you really want to see on a, a unit like a Samnite Warrior. Thorax Sword and Thorax Sword swapping out. Good swap there. You can see a clean move between the two units. 
So the second pressure unit now getting in on those militia hoplites. That's going to keep your units a little fresher. It also allows you to kind of take advantage of, you know, things like your charge bonus, right? Even though the charge bonus may not be great, it's still something, so you still get some of that impact. Getting some attacking breaking, look, it looks like here. They got mercenary Italian swords and some thorough spears that are wavering. They do have a Seleucid Thoros, or a Thorax sword there backing them up. And the same night where he actually backed out of there and came over here. We got two royal peltas here from uh, Epirus, Sam Knight Warrior, Sam Knight Warrior. You know, we were talking about how Macedon's a, kind of an expensive faction in that they have a lot of kind of upper tier units, but not very great lower tier units. Epirus kind of has the opposite issue. They, they basically, their best mainline infantry is the Sam Knight Warrior. Well, the problem is it's a mercenary unit, so they can only bring a limited amount, which I think might be four for, for Epirus. Uh, remind, if somebody knows, remind me in the, the comments. It's either three or four. That's not a that's not a full mainline infantry squad, you know what I mean? Typically, your mainline infantry for your, for your army is usually going to number around seven or eight, or eight especially depending if you have a rule on it um, you know some people will limit how many of the same unit you can bring but um only bringing four is, is is rough because it leaves you basically having to rely really heavily on either one your spear units or two your low to kind of low mid-tier units like your mercenary italian swords but it means that epirus unfortunately kind of lacks a little bit of punch you know they they need a, a, they they lack a really good killer outside of their sam knight warriors thorough spears now in the combat somehow the mercenary italian sword kind of got strung out over here uh, but he broke so he, i guess he's gone sam knight warrior and thorough spear moving up we also have cretan archers moving over i'm still really surprised so where did the the citizen cavalry go did they go do something and I missed it? No, legitimately, where did the Citizen Cab go? I must have missed something. Did they go over here and end up dying? I have no idea. They're sneaky, I'm telling you. There's some dead horses here. Look at this, Macedon actually kind of making some pushback here. Got Thorough Spears, the Thorax Swords taking on the Thorax Swords, 84 to 114, 31 kills, 46 kills. Got some Pontic Swords in, you know, here in the back lines. Thorough Spears back there, Thorough Spears. I wonder if they have any pikes. Macedon does have two Royal Peltas. This Pontic Royal Cap trying to kind of like get in and, and do some like charges and stuff and i just i don't think it works very well for the most part um you know doing that kind of stuff tends to rely re require a lot of space to maneuver and and this side of alexandria does not have that they're very tight streets very tight corners the the pathing of the horses just don't work very well and then not only that having to do that at the same time as you're trying to cycle a unit out while you charge it just kind of turns into a cluster you know what i mean and while yes you can occasionally get a good charge i personally don't think it's worth it i think you hold your cavalry to a, a point where the enemy is far more exposed you know you maybe could have brought that cavalry around the outside and threatened out here or something you know um or just held them inside somewhere kind of towards the you know the middle here where you can kind of come in and be kind of cheeky, you know? Threaten over here, threaten over here, stuff like that. You know, I think what they're trying to do with the cab is, I think they're just trying to be a little too smart, if that makes sense. Sometimes the game just isn't good enough to do smart, if that makes sense. So as you can see, we have Thorough Spear versus Thorough Spear. 82 kills versus 97. Got 100 men versus 48 men. 
and looks like Mastodon now beginning to break. He is taking quite a bit of fire here from the back. We got some Thorax, we got Syrian Heavy Archers. You can see Seleucid really heavy on the Silver Shield Swords here. One, two, three. I think his gen is a, yeah, a Gima Cav, which I'm a big fan of a Gima Cav. Uh, Gima Cav slash Companion Cav, they're the exact same unit. I think they're good, they're fast, they're, they have a good punch, you know, but they're not as slow as Cataphracts. I think the Hellenic Cataphract and any Cataphract, they're just kind of ponderous, you know what I mean? And sometimes for, especially like my personal gameplay, I hate it. I, I like to kind of move fast and go, go, go. I like high speed units like Luc or factions like Lusitani and Swaby, right? Heavy, ponderous, like, you know, shoot super, super, super heavy cab just doesn't work for me. Pontic Royal Cab is another cab that is very similar to the Gima and the Companions. So Luke is still trying to grind out of this area here. Looks like Mastodon officially going to move to this corner now. Um, the cab just getting lit up by archers. They're going to try and get another charge here. They might catch them in the transition, but they're losing so many. It's a good charge. 71. Let's see what they get. Sealed wall is way too late, Salukid. You can't shield wall after you know, after you've taken the the impact of the charge, he didn't get a he didn't get very good kills there. That was a really solid charge. I don't know why he should have gotten better kills. And Epirus just look at this. Epirus just ripping down the center lane here. Look at that. They are just on it, man. Macedon might have to consider giving this up. In fact, they may not have anything else over here. I wonder if they started cycling stuff back around. And we might possibly have most of our units in the center now. So I'm curious as to if Ep Epirus will take units and threaten this direction. You know, you probably want to try and spread, spread that defense out if you can. Sorry, it's taking a drink there. Got our Sam Knight Warriors here taking on some Thorough Spears. The Sam Knights are gonna definitely win that, but it does help that you've got like your Eastern Archers and such sitting here, you know, shooting into that as well. They, they stopped, obviously. Yeah, Mastodon, I, I don't really get the army here. Two Archers and two Slingers. They're not Rhodian Slingers and they're not Cretan Archers. I, I when I build my army, one of the first things, the first thing I pick is my general. The second thing I pick is my ranged units, which I pick my best archers or slingers, depending on the settlement, so on and so forth. But, you know, that's like the second thing I pick is, because those are the things I know I, I need those, right? So for Macedon, I'd go like, you know, the companion cap general, Three Cretan archers. I might even just leave it at three Cretan archers. If not, I might bring like the the fourth uh, Rhodian slinger, and then move on to my infantry at that point. You know, seven thorax swords, and then try to fill in with whatever junk I can with Macedon. But yeah, that I don't think it was the greatest call with bringing just honestly not very good ranged units here, especially you're taking on you know, almost mirror factions if you really think about this. You know, you have really good archers for for Epirus, you have really good archers for Seleucid, but you also have really good archers for for Macedon with the Cretans, but they didn't bring them. Sam Knight Warriors 54 kills, the Thoros here with 29. Now we got shots coming out. Looks like they're going after the other Sam Knight. That's a good target. I like that target there, Pontus. Good shot right into the back end of that Sam Knight Warrior. 78, 74, and he realizes that he's getting the hell out of that. Yeah, he turned, he turned his shields there. 
But because he turned his shields there, then now the Thorax Sword gets up in his butt now. I, uh, it's just kind of funny. And as you can see, this side is pretty well collapsed. I'm curious if Seleucid is going to threaten the back here or not, or if they're just going to loop in and connect with, uh, with Epirus here. I still think, I do think that Epirus should threaten this side. Even if they don't go there, they can still make it look like it, because then it forces the defenders to send units over to defend it. At the moment especially, I think that would really benefit the attackers. I'm pretty sure the attackers are outnumbering the defenders here pretty heavily. So they've got the manpower to spare to spread that, while the defense really doesn't have the manpower to spread it, to spread this. The Eastern Archer is also not a great archer unit, the only 10 armor, so these Cretans are doing pretty heavy damage. But they might catch one of these Cretans here. Only 33 kills and he's gone. That's pretty significant. You got 81, 53 kills, 89 with 127 on that one. Wow. Eastern Archers now 45, 37, and then 56 on this one. I think he went running forward when he didn't mean to. Oh, that Javi toss. That was a really good Javi toss on the Eastern Archer. In fact, I believe the Royal Peltus was targeting the Eastern Archer because you could see he kind of, some of his units run through the defensive line here because I'm pretty sure they were targeted on the Archer, not the Thurospear. Royal Peltus are just going to obliterate this. There's, it's such a good unit. 65 melee attack is just ridiculous. It may not have the greatest weapon damage, but it's it's very, very good melee attack. It's basically, it hits a lot. You compare that to the Silver Shield Sword with only 43, but the Silver Shield Sword has a better weapon damage there. They really need to get into this though, because that Royal Peltus is not, it, it does not do well by itself in open spaces. You know, it needs to be kind of supported on its flanks to keep, so it can just fight forward, you know what I mean? So they really need to get in there and support that. You got the other Royal Peltus chasing on the Easter Archers. And I, I don't get, I don't know what they plan here because, so you bring two up, up two pikes to the Pont, uh, Pontus, but you bring them to the big open area instead of putting them in the, the nice secure corridor. On the other side, the uh, Royal Peltus kind of chasing these archers off into Podunk Nowhere. Got some thorough spears here. Got a Pontic Sword, another, but it's a Levy Pike, so it's not a very good one. Then you got the Royal Peltus General for Macedon. The Royal Peltus here, yeah, just kind of getting beat up because of that. It really wants to get into combat here instead of getting jabbied like that. They need infantry forward. They need infantry forward. You have so much infantry, but why is it not forward? They could be overwhelming this courtyard with how much infantry they have left, but they're not. You know, here comes one thorax. You know, you can get in here and get on the flank of that pike right there. Or slip between the two. You know, there's some options here. Or you come over and engage the Royal Peltus. See Macedon's archers run all the way over here. It does seem like they do realize that this is the point that's good. It's it's there's a lot of people who think that the final point is over here, which would be overpowered. That would be a nasty defensive point for the defenders. There's really nothing the attackers could do, you know what I mean? Your only way in is right there. You know, I think you can come down here and maybe get shots, but it's really not very open at all. So in the end, like I said, it doesn't matter anyways, because this is the point. Here we go. Royal Peltus General going to come in and hit the back end of the Silver Shield Swords. 
Kind of an awkward formation. It's a good charge. They do have a 21. It's okay. But they need to get off of these levy pikes. Don't don't fight pikes, guys. And he, he kind of is. You know, he turned around because he's fighting that. It does take him off the pikes. And here comes the Royal Peltas. The tiny 17 men are going to conquer the world. One pike gone, 64 kills. The other pike with 19 kills. Pontic Sword General in combat. There's the Agima Cav General. I thought it was the Pontus General from earlier. Or, gener not General, but the Pontus Cavalry. You can see Pontus Archers over here. The Syrians will hunt them down. They are, wow, that was, you know, you know what I mean? You know, they are putting on a pretty, like, they're, they're putting on a solid defense, as in that, like, they're not going out without a fight. I do think that it, to me, looks like it's pretty well over for the defenders. I just don't think that they have enough to fill all the gaps. You know, so if the attackers play this the way they should, they should be able to overwhelm all of this pretty easy. You hit the flank of that, it's gone. You know what I mean? Pikes do not, levy pikes especially, 35 base brown. Literally all you have to do is sneeze on these and they're dead. Here comes the Game of Cap General. You know, he could just charge straight into this. You know, it's square formation, but to be honest with you, it would probably still do well. But he doesn't need to either. He has options of going around around he's gonna come over here somewhere I, or no he is okay good i was like why the hell are you going over there sorry about that 19 23 there you go get some kills on all these the juicy arches get to the arches got a lot of juicy stuff here for that general to kill Bounce power is actually shifting towards the attackers, or to the defenders. I really don't know how. I, I, I'm honestly kind of stunned. Um, they're levy pikes. I literally don't know how their levy pikes are alive at this point. Um, it's a levy pike. You literally can sneeze on them and they shatter. You know what I mean? And I, I, don't, I don't know. They're still kind of facing these pikes head on. I don't. I don't know why. It's got 71 kills for some reason. 81 kills on the Pontic uh, Sword General. Yeah, Silver Shield Swords. You know, he is getting Javi tosses into the pike, but he needs to get into that, like ASAP. You need to start getting around some of these units, but honestly, they're losing a little bit of their capability to do so because they've lost so much, you know what I mean? And now he's facing Levy Pikes head on. Break the lines. Guys, don't. Uh, somebody who has watched enough of my videos, please comment in the comment section what words I, sh I have sitting in my brain right now. I say it again and again and again. Don't fight Pikes head on. Ay, ay, ay. He did turn around to fight some Royal Peltis. This Royal Peltis has a gazillion kills, 178 kills. But like I said, this Levy Pike should be dead. I really, I, I don't fully understand why we've got two units, li le you know, levied on top of each other when you can go around with one of them. Yeah, we pulled this sh Silver Shield out. Um, the game is Cav is down to 16 men with 42 kills. 
Get, come on, get in some pikes, please. Please, I beg of you. I'm not trying to be mean, I just, uh, it just kind of makes me sad. You know what I mean? You know, and in the end, my only goal here is I just I want to help people get better. You know what I mean? So I, I really hope that when people hear me talk about this stuff that they take it not as, like, a, an insult or bullying, but as, you know, a way to get better at the game. You know what I mean? Um, and I hope they take it that way. I really do. The game of cap now to 71 kills, but now to seven men left. I think the defenders just won this. Um, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I don't know how. With how they got pushed all the way back into the big open area. But, you know, they didn't even have a solid line. You know, it was like unit, big gap, big gap, you know, all this stuff. And the, the attackers had plenty of the plenty of units. But they, they didn't go through any of the gaps. They didn't flank anything. And, and I, I hate to say it, I don't think the defenders specifically won this. I think the attackers have kind of lost this. And honestly, I don't know how there's nine minutes left in the game either. They do have, they do have healthy units left. You know, 109 men. No one's a Syrian. Um, 38's not very healthy. 38's not very healthy. So they have one healthy unit left. The Levy Pike is still alive. I don't know how. I don't think I've ever seen a Levy Pike last this long in combat. I'm just saying. Look at that, 112 kills, kills with two chevrons on a throw spear. Very nice. Royal Peltus also has two chevrons. I know that he... I know that Macedon chevroned some of his units, but I don't know if he chevroned any of these. But I'm pretty sure at least one of those two chevrons is earned. Not just, not bought. Attack the position! And now they're basically surrounded. The Royal Pelt is about to break. 216 kills of three chevrons. That is going to free up this Silver Shield Sword. Got a slinger here, though. Well, all the slinger is going to do is just sit here and throw rocks at you. Now he's chasing him off. Now he's going to loop around the obelisk here. Maybe he gets into the back of the Ropeltus. What do we got? 104, 102. Let's see, 123 kills, combat even. This is the general. Pretty sure the Saluka general is dead. There's no way that he's alive with seven men, right? Right? There's no way. But they don't have a general dead notification, so maybe not. Does look like Saluka are using formation attack. Notice how his unit is not curving in on the side of the Royal Peltist. That is hugely beneficial to the Royal Peltist. Oh, that sucks. Now you also got this happening. That might be the difference maker. That was a, kind of an awkward shift there. I don't think it was a very good one. You know, I think he just took a lot of losses because of that. Bounce powers back to even. These are honestly like pretty good plays here in the last minute. I've been really impressed with how Mastodon has played his units here at the end. Um, Seleucid, I think, is doing well. Um, but I do think that even Seleucid's player would have made that he made mistakes. Uh, which is fine. Guys, everybody makes mistakes. It's okay. Two 
The question comes down to, obviously, how do you come back from them? Can you recover from said mistakes? I really like this. He's got his heavy hitter in combat, but he's protecting its flank with the pike unit. And then they don't want to go into these pikes because don't fight pikes head on. I would not pursue this. Keep this unit tight. Do exactly what you've been doing here, Mastodon. You're doing great. You got a little bit more of a gap here than you want. You see that silver shield kind of coming in and might be getting in on the edge of that Royal Peltis now. Royal Peltis losing slightly. You might be able to twist in and get those guys involved now. Silver Shield 168 kills, winning decisively. They could change that if the pike gets in. You have to keep these two units tight to each other. I think the Seleucid General just shattered. Yep, there he goes, he's gone. Okay, pulling the Royal Peltis back. I think it's a smart play though that Seleucid continues to focus that. Because I, I bet you anything, if this Royal Peltis General dies, this thing is gone. Remember, 35, it's 36 because they have a chevron. But the base morale is not very good for the Levy Pikes. I'm amazed they are still in this combat. And you've got 66 versus 45 now. Combat even. Pikes desperately trying to support their general. This is why there's four minutes left, because there, there's a lot of strategical, mo tactical move, movement, I should say. A lot of tactical movement happening at this point in the game. Get that guy in. What is he? What was that? I'm not sure why he did that. I think he just took some unnecessary losses. And this is really not a, this is a really good thing for Mastodon. I don't usually like the choice of the Commander General, which is the one they've got here with Raise the Banner, and I can't remember what the other one's called. But at this situation, it's actually hugely beneficial to them because they're the ones that need to hold out. And so their morale is hugely important. Oh, he's dead. How did it, what? He just used that ability and he's dead? What? Because once your general dies, you can't use your abilities anymore. Wow, he died like literally at, immediately after losing the is uh, using his ability. That's crazy. Because you we saw the raise the banner thing. I mean, that's only up for like what twenty seconds, and then boom, dead. I'm actually amazed right now that this levy pikeman is not gone. Levy Pike might be MVP. Look at this. Look at this little cheeky Silver Shield sword that's still back here. Like, you uh, you guys run away. I'm going to stand here and kill the... Well, yeah, there's a lot of them, so maybe, maybe I'll go with you. I, I don't specifically... I, I would love if Seleucid watches this. Let me know what was the purpose of pulling back the general like that. Especially given that the, the Macedonian general is dead at this point. I'm intrigued. I'm very curious. Very, very curious. The hard part's going to be that I think what you want right now is you want this thing gone. So how do you get into it by yourself, right? There's only one unit. So, as you try to attack it, that pike is just going to kind of try and match your movements, right? Try to turn and face you as much as it can, which makes it hard for you to kill it. 
and then especially get the support of a solid, you know, unit in support, it's a tough decision here. He is targeting the general still. So here he comes in. Mastodon just trying to avoid the pike. The pike is a little out of out of formation. Look at that. He's red. There you go. He's wavering. No, no, no. Ooh, you might you might be able to finish him here, even though you're frontal. There he is. He's shattered. He's gone. Okay, 32 versus 51. Silver Shield should win this. this well, look at that. Like. You, at the exact same time, both of them using use of the whip. Get rid of shield wall. You're hurting yourself right now in the shield wall. Yep, yeah, doesn't matter. GG. That was a far closer match than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to be 100% honest with you about that. Um, I fully, like, there was a point I fully thought that the attackers had lost this game. Um, very good job pulling that back from the brink of, of destruction. Uh, Doozy Bros, uh, Saluka, 1920, with, uh, that's the f best kills in the game. Uh, he brought three Silver Shield Swords and a bunch of Thorax, so really only one Hillman unit here. He did get three Chevrons on this, 238 kills. Uh, Shockwave, as Epirus, 1789, Royal Peltus, both did pretty good, two Chevrons there. Um, archers, they did fine. Two of them did really good. Uh, Sam Knight Warriors, it's, it's, it's there. That's not, that, I'm going to be 100% honest. That's not very good, but it's fine. Thorough Spears really pulled their weight 179, 110, 118. The Italian Swords did very well. For the defenders, we have Kenny as Pontus with 1310 kills. I don't know why you got a voice, Kenny, but you got a voice. 111 kills here on the general with two chevrons. Archers, eh, it's fine. Pikes, they, it, it's not a lot of kills for pikes. It's not bad. Um, they did what they needed to do, which was really held that, that one line pretty well, I would say. Um, Pontic swords, they honestly were pretty outmatched this whole game. Um, Thorax swords are just better, unfortunately. Um, Zelina as Macedon with 1,590 kills. Look at those, Royal Peltis. 216, 147. Mwah! Lovely, lovely, lovely. 104 kills with two chevrons on the pike. Oy. This, guys, it should not happen. I, I give Macedon credit that at, there at the end with the two units left, he did very good with his positioning and maneuvering. Very good. 104 kills should not happen on a pike. 169 on this thorax. Most of the thorax, honestly, not so hot. You know what I mean? Um, just kind of average. 124 on a thorough spear. It's range, just kind of average, you know. Uh, those guys, really, those three units did what? Like half, not probably not half, probably like a quarter of all of his kills was right there in those three units. But that is going to be it for today's battle. Thank you guys so much for joining. Don't forget that if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And we will see you guys next time.